Cooperatives are principally based organizations. Every decision by the board of directors, every financial decision, and every decision by management and employees follows a set of principles that guide all cooperatives. And these principles trace back to what many argue was the first successful cooperative, the Rokedale Society of Equitable Pioneers. These founders developed and followed seven cooperative principles that guided their decision in leading their cooperative, and all cooperatives today follow these same principles. Back in 1844, in Rokedale, England, a group of weavers and other artisans gathered to discuss the struggles they faced. The Industrial Revolution was in full force, and many within this group were losing their jobs to modern machinery. And with the little money they had, they were not able to purchase consumer goods at a fair price and weight. These individuals would purchase dry powder milk, but the powder would be half sawdust and half milk powder. And the price for this inferior product was inflated because of the lack of competition. During this meeting, the idea of a modern cooperative was born. These weavers and artisans formed the Ropedale Society of Equitable Pioneers that was a consumer cooperative focused on competitive prices and a fair product or weight. There should be no sawdust in the milk. This modern cooperative was focused on creating member value and solving a common problem. It was also the first to pay patronage back to its members. The Rokedale Society of Equitable Pioneers was very successful and a big reason for their success was the original founders ran a principally based organization. These founders developed seven cooperative principles that guided their decisions, which significantly contributed to their success. So what are those principles and why do they work even today? The first principle is a voluntary and open membership. Cooperative members cannot be coerced to join the cooperative. It has to be their decision to join. Open membership means any individual or business who is eligible to join the cooperative can join. In the case of farmer cooperatives today, membership consists of agricultural producers that come together to conduct business with a cooperative. Speaking of business, the next cooperative principle is member economic participation. A cooperative is a business, which means being profitable is important. Members conducting business with a cooperative will generate profits, and these profits are used to create value for the members. If value is created, then the members will continue to use and purchase products and services from the cooperative. Profit use is tied to the third cooperative principle, democratic member control. So how are cooperatives democratically controlled? Members can serve on the board of directors that governs the cooperative, has control over how the profits are distributed back to the membership through patronage, and how profits are used to invest in future growth. Members also vote on important issues, such as who will serve on the board of directors and changes to the bylaws. Membership control is strengthened by the fourth cooperative principle, autonomy and independence. Many cooperatives enter into various agreements with other organizations that improve the efficiency of their business, acquire outside capital to finance growth projects, or enter into a contract that creates value for the membership. But these outside organizations do not have a say on the cooperative itself. Autonomy and independence ensure cooperative members still maintain control. Cooperatives can more effectively serve their membership by embracing the fifth cooperative principle, cooperation among cooperatives. Local cooperatives can work together through grain alliances, joint ventures, or other business agreements. Regional cooperatives can work with local cooperatives to provide economies of scale or debt capital. And cooperatives can have an international presence to provide access to global markets. The key is making sure that all of the cooperatives work together to create value for all of their members. Another way of adding value to members is through the sixth cooperative principle, education, training, and information. Cooperatives have a long history of sharing and discussing information with each other. Education and training is a hallmark of the success of the cooperative system. Cooperatives can better serve their members by having open dialogue with one another 
and by learning from outside experts. The final and seventh cooperative principle is concern for community. Cooperatives are integral businesses for their local communities. Often, the co-op is a significant employer in their area. They pay taxes that help support local infrastructure, and they participate in many community events, such as county fairs and fundraisers. Caring for and being connected to a community only strengthens the cooperative. These seven cooperative principles help guide every cooperative. Voluntary and open membership, member economic participation, democratic member control, autonomy and independence, cooperation among cooperatives, education, training, and information, concern for community. Applying these principles within a co-op promotes cooperatives and their future successes. Mm -hmm.